Mrs. Figueredo, Figueredo, distinguished guests, it's an honor and a privilege for Nancy and myself to welcome you to the White House. The timing of this visit gives us an unexpected opportunity. Yesterday was Mrs. Figueredo's birthday. So I hope you were well, you already have joined me in wishing her a very happy birthday. Mr. President, our discussions this morning were satisfying and enjoyable. We spoke freely and frankly, expressing both agreement and disagreement in the same friendly candor. The personal contact we've made and the rapport that we've developed can only serve the interest of both our countries. I had a particular interest in getting to know the President not only because of my admiration for Brazil and its people, but also because of the courage and the steady hand that he has demonstrated in guiding his country through an especially challenging period in Brazilian history. Mr. President, I have always maintained that when the job to be done is really rough, the horse cavalry can provide the man to do it. <laughs> and your record bears me out. The President is of a third generation of horse cavalry in his country. In your annual message to the Brazilian Congress this year, you restated your belief in those ideals that have guided your administration. The democracy I envision, you said, is dynamic and creative. In keeping with this basic principles such as private property and free enterprise, which are the basis of freedom itself, will serve the individual society and the ideal of distributive justice. Well, Mr. President, your commitment to liberty is most encouraging in a world that's grown and darker and made so by totalitarian forces. As President, you have provided your people with innovative and responsive government. In fact, while preparing for our meetings, I come, came across an idea Americans might do well to emulate. The Brazilian government has a cabinet minister, and I believe he's with us here tonight, whose only job is cutting red tape and returning government programs to the private sector. <laughs> His title is Minister of Bureauc Bureaucraticization. Debureaucraticization. Someone, I hope, is taking notes. <laughs> During the welcoming ceremonies this morning, much was said about the long history of friendship between our people. For 158 years, our peaceful and amicable relations have been maintained without serious disruption. A tribute to the common sense and common interests of both our peoples. I mentioned our camaraderie during the Second World War, but most significant has been our goodwill in times of peace. Mr. President, your visit coincides with one of the most serious challenges to peace this hemisphere has known. I think you know how hard the United States, linked by friendship to both countries involved in the South Atlantic conflict, worked to prevent war and then to bring peace. We all hope and pray that peace efforts now underway in New York will yield fruit. For our part, the friendship of all countries in the hemisphere is precious to us, just as Brazil's is. And we will work to make sure that the inter-American system on which the peace and justice of the hemisphere rest emerges from this time of trial, not weakened, but reinforced. Mr. President, we live in a world dramatically different from the way it was at the close of the Second World War. Every country is now dependent on the cooperation and goodwill of others. We don't long for days gone by, but instead look to the days ahead because we see tremendous new opportunities unfolding every day. Let us remember the changing times have not altered the affection between us. And now, may I ask you all to join me in a toast to President and Mrs. Figueiredo, and to the people of Brazil.
Senhor presidente, senhores convidados, agradeço as generosas palavras que Vossa Excelência, senhor presidente, fundou-se neste amplo contexto. O Brasil é também um país em desenvolvimento. Partilha, portanto, dos problemas, objetivos. I certainly wish to express my gratitude for the warm welcome extended to us by the American government and people. I will return to Brazil convinced that we have laid the groundwork for the future development of relations that date back to the independence of our country. Such relations are guided by the principles of mutual understanding and respect, as well as by appreciation for the specific interests of eternal happiness. Se o quadradismo dos meus versos vai de encontro aos intelectos que não usam coração como expressão. E você abusou, tirou partido de mim, abusou, tirou partido de mim, abusou, tirou partido de mim, abusou. Não sei fazer poema ou canção Que vale de outra coisa que não seja amor Se o quadratismo dos meus versos Vai te contar as intelectos Que não usam coração como expressão E você abusou Tirou o partido de mim, abusou Partido de mim abusou, tirou o partido de mim abusou. Você abusou, tirou o partido de mim abusou, tirou o partido de mim abusou, tirou o partido de mim abusou. Partido de mim abusou, tirou partido de mim abusou. Você
favor vai embora Minha alma que chora Que está vendo meu filho What better to meet the mood of this evening than the music of Sergio Mendez and these other wonderful artists who've been with us here tonight. You know, Brazil has contributed a great deal to the sound of music in America. Uh, Sergio was born in Rio, and then came to our country, and in 1962, he and other musical stylists from Brazil performed a concert at Carnegie Hall. And since then, there have been a great many hits. There has been The Look of Love, Fool on a Hill, Scarborough Fair, and many others. But I think we've seen a very good sample of it this evening, and we're deeply indebted to them for the entertainment they've provided for us. Thank you. You're welcome.